The Woods by Hattie Howard. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. I love the woods when the magic hand of spring, as if sweeping the keys of a worn out instrument, touches the earth. When beauty and song and the gladness of birth awaken the heart of the desolate land and carol its rapture to every breeze. In summer's still solstice, my steps are drawn to the shade of the forest trees, to revel with Pan in his secret haunts, to pipe mazurkas while satyrs dance, or lull to soft slumber some favorite fawn, and fascinate strange wild birds and bees. I love the woods when autumnal fires are kindled on every hill, when dead leaves rustle in grove and field and trees are known by the fruits they yield and the wild grapes sweetened by frost inspire a mildly desperate bibulous thrill there's a joy for which i would fling to the air my petty portion of wealth and fame and tracking the rabbit o'er fresh fallen snow the ways of the coon and opossum to know to capture squirrels when branches are bare as the cupboard shell of that ancient dame. Oh, I long to explore the woods again in my own aboriginal way, as before I knew how culture could frown on a hoydenish gait and a homespun gown, or dream that the strata of proud upper ten would smile at rusticity's naivety. I sigh for the pleasures of long ago, in youth sweet halcyon time, when better beloved than the thoroughfare by multitudes trod, were the woodlands, where was never a path that I did not know, nor thrifty sapling I dared not climb. Alas for lost freedom, alas for me, for, oh, society's lip would curl, propriety's self with scornful eye, and guilt-edged fashion would pass me by to know that sometimes i'm dying to be the romp the rover the same old girl and a poem this recording is in the public domain like summer by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by eva davis november tis a summer's day for tropic airs are blowing as soft as whispered roundelay from unseen lips that seem to say to feathered songsters going to sunnier southern climes afar stay where you are stay where you are and other tokens glad as these declare that summer lingers round latent buds still hum the bees slow fades the green from forest trees your autumn's artist fingers have touched the landscape and instead brought out the amber brown and red the invalid may yet enjoy his favorite recreation gay romping girl unfettered boy in outdoor sports the time employ and happy consummation of prudent plans the farmer know ere wintry breezes round him blow and they by poverty controlled good fortune shall betide them as scenes of beauty they behold and seem to revel in the gold which plutus has denied them for ah the poor from want's despair oft covet wealth they never share end of poem this recording is in the public domain sheridan's last ride by hattie howard Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson While Phoebus lent his hottest rays To signalize midsummer days, I stood in that far-famed enclosure By thousands visited, Where in the stillness of reposure Are grouped battalions dead, Where round each simple burial stone The grass for decades twain has grown, Protecting them in dreamless slumber Who perished long ago, The multitude's defying number, a part of war's tableau along the winding avenue a vast procession came in view the mourners slow advancing column with reverent step drew near 
the dead march plain sad and solemn above a soldier's bier there were the colonels brigadiers comrades in arms of other years civilians true and loyal hearted to him their bravest man who seemed to say to those departed make room for sheridan anon beside the new-made mound the war-worn veterans gathered round and spoke of leon and of lander and others ranked as high recalling each his own commander one not afraid to die thus silent tenants one by one are crowding in at arlington thus sheridan the horseman daring has joined the honoured corps of those their true insignia wearing who battle nevermore potomac's waves shall placid flow and sing his requiem soft and low his terrace grave be sweet with clover and daisies star his bed for sheridan's last ride is over the general is dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain a bit of gladness by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by april 6090 california united states of america a bit of gladness as i near my lonely cottage at the close of weary day there's a little bit of gladness comes to meet me on the way dimpled tanned and petticoated innocent as angels are like a smiling straying sunbeam is my stella like a star soon a hand of tissue softness slips confidingly in mine and with tender look appealing eyes of beauty sweetly shine like a gentle shepherd guiding some lost lamb unto the fold so she leads me homeward prattling till her stories are all told papa i'm so glad to see you cousin mabel came to-day and the gas man brought a letter that he said you'd better pay yes an awful thing's has happened my poor kitty's drowned to death mamma has got the pigs in clover here she stops for want of breath i'm like the bold knight errant from his castle who would roam trusting her my faithful steward for a strict account of home and each day i toil and hazard all that any man may dare for a resting place at even and the love that waits me there and sometimes i look with pity on my neighbor's mansion tall there are chambers full of pictures there are marbles in the hall yet with all the signs of splendor that may gild a pile of stone not a living thing about it but the owner grim and lone i believe that all his millions he would give without repine for a little bit of gladness in his life like that in mine this it is that makes my pathway beautiful wherever trod keeps my soul from wreck and ruin keeps me nearer to my god end of poem this recording is in the public domain the charity ball by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by betty b the charity ball there was many a token of festal display and revelling crowds who were never so gay and as it were aeolus charming the hours an orchestra hidden by foliage and flowers there were tapestries fit for the home of a queen and mirrors that glistened in wonderful sheen there was feasting and mirth in the banqueting hall for this was the annual charity ball there were pompous civilians in wealth who abide displaying their purses the source of their pride and plethoric dealers in margins and stocks and owners of acres of elegant blocks and tenement landlords who cling to assent when from the poor widow exacting her rent immovable stern as an adamant wall and yet who came down to this charity ball there was beauty whose toilet superb and unique cost underpaid industry many a week of arduous labor of eye and heartache its starving inadequate pittance to make there were mischievous maidens and cavaliers bold whose blushes and glances and coquetry told a tale of the monarch who held them in thrall who met as by chance at the charity ball there were delicate viands the poor never taste and dollars were lavished in prodigal waste to pamper the palate of epicures rich who drew from the wine cellar's cavernous niche excelsior brands of the rarest champagnes to loosen their tongues though it pilfered their brains oh sad if a step in some woeful downfall 
should ever be traced to a charity ball outside of the window pressed close to the pane and furrowed by tears that had fallen like rain was the face of a woman so spectral in hue with great liquid eyes like twin oceans of blue and cheeks in whose hollows were written the lines that pitiless hunger so often defines who muttered as closer she gathered the shawl oh never for me is this charity ball from liveried hirelings who bade her be gone by uniformed minions compelled to move on out into the street again driven to roam for friends she had none neither fortune nor home while carnival goers in morning's dull gray as homeward returning fatigued and blasé a vision encountered their hearts to appall and banish all thought of the charity ball as if seeking warmth from the icy curbstone a form half reclining half clad and unknown dead eyes looking up with a meaningless stare lay close to the crowded and broad thoroughfare a form so emaciate the spirit had fled but the pulpit and press and the public all said as society's doings they sought to recall that a brilliant success was the charity ball end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Bell of Baltimore by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Bell of Baltimore One of the notable features of Baltimore is the big bell that hangs in the city hall tower to strike the hour and sound the fire alarm. It is called Big Sam and weighs 5,000 pounds a million feet above the ground for so it seemed in winding round a million and two more the latter stiff and sore while perspiration formed a part of every reeking pore i viewed the city like a chart spread out upon the floor and said great guy jehoiakin to me is meagre pleasure in the height of spires and domes of walls like ancient rooms nor care i for the marts of trade or shelves of musty tomes nor yet for yonder colonnade before your palace homes but curiosity is keen to know the city's reigning queen who suiteth well the score of suitors at her door oh which of your divinities is she whom all adore embodiment of truth who is the bell of baltimore veracity's revolving eyes looked up as if to read the skies why lor a miss see dar de bell is in de ar land sakes of all de mysteries you never learned before why don't you know big sam he is de bell of baltimore and a poem this recording is in the public domain. Christmas at Church by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Christmas at Church T'was drawing near the holiday When piety and pity met In whispering counsel and agreed That Christmas time in homes of need Should be remembered in a way They never could forget then noble generosity took youth and goodness by the hand and planned a thousand charming ways to celebrate this best of days while hearts were held in sympathy by love's encircling band so multitudes together came like wandering magi from the east with precious gifts unto the king with every good and perfect thing to satisfy a shivering frame or amplify a feast the angels had looked long and far the happy scene to parallel when through the sanctuary door were carried gifts from shop and store the treasures of the rich bazaar to give but not to sell as once the apostolic twelve of goods allotment made so equity dealt out with care the widows and the orphans share and of the aged forced to delve at drudging task or trade oh could the joy which tears express that out of gladness come 
be mirrored in its tender glow before the beautiful tableau ingratitude and selfishness would shrink abashed and dumb if every year and everywhere could kindness thus expand in bounteous gratuity to all her children earth would be a flowery vale like eden fair a milk and honey land end of poem this recording is in the public domain mysterious by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by melanie t the morning sun rose bright and fair upon a lovely village where prosperity abounded and ceaseless hum of industry in lines of friendly rivalry from day to day resounded its shaded avenues were wide and closely bordered either side with cottages or mansions or marked by blocks of masonry that might defy a century to loosen from their stanchions its peaceful dwellers daily vied to make this spot with anxious pride a paradise of beauty recounted its attractions o'er and its adornment held no more a pleasure than a duty but ere the daylight passed away that hamlet fair in ruins lay in hapless people scattered like playthings at the cyclone's will and scarce remained one domicile its fury had not shattered few moments of the tempest's wrath suffice to mark one dreadful path with scenes of devastation while over piles of wild debris rose shrieks of dying agony above the desolation o oh, mystery who can understand why sudden from god's mighty hand destructive bolts of power without discrimination strike the evil and the good alike as in that dreadful hour alas for aching hearts that wait to-day in homes made desolate by one sharp blow appalling for all who kneel by altars lone and strive to say thy will be done that awful day recalling we dare not question his decrees who see if not as mortals sees nor doubt his goodness even nor let our hearts be dispossessed of faith that he disposeth best all things in earth and heaven end of poem this recording is in the public domain be not anxious by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson be careful for nothing philippians four six revised version be not anxious of all the precepts in the book by word of inspiration given that bear the import tone and look of messages direct from heaven from revelation back to genesis is nothing needed half so much as this ah well the great apostle spake in admonition wise and kind who bade humanity forsake the petty weaknesses that bind the spirit like a bird with pinioned wings that to a broken bough despairing clings were all undue anxiety eliminated from desire could feverish fears and fancies be consumed on some funeral pyre like holy hedicomb or sacrifice twould be accepted up in paradise could this machinery go on without the friction caused by fret what greater loads were lightly drawn more easily were trials met then might existence be with blessing rife and lengthened out like hezekiah's life o oh, be not anxious trouble grows when cherished like a secret grief it is the worm within the rose that eats the heart out leaf by leaf and though the outer covering be fair the weevil of decay is busy there in deep despondency to pine or vain solicitude is to deny this truth divine that god is great and good that he is ruler over earth and heaven and so disposes and makes all things even end of poem this recording is in the public domain Mount Vernon by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org 
by betty b mount vernon subdued and sad i trod the place where he the hero lived and died where long entombed beneath the shade by willow bough and cypress made the peaceful scene with verdure rife he and the partner of his life beloved of every land and race are sleeping side by side the summer solstice at its height reflected from potomac's tide a glare of light and through the trees intensified the southern breeze that dallied in the deep ravines with graceful ferns and evergreens while northern cheeks so strangely white grew dark as nubia's pride what must this homestead once have been in boundless hospitality when green or putnam may have met the host who welcomed lafayette or when pulaski honored guest accepted shelter food and rest while rank and talent gathered in its banquet hall of luxury what comfort cheer and kind intent the weary stranger oft hath known when she its mistress fair and good reigned here in peerless womanhood when soft shy maiden fancy gave encouragement to soldiers brave and washington his presence lent to grace its bright hearthstone o beautiful mount vernon home the mecca of our long desire of more than passing interest to north and south to east and west to all columbia's children free a precious priceless legacy thine altar shrine as pilgrims come rekindles patriot fire end of poem this recording is in the public domain a prisoner by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by nico rapisora where i can see him all day long and hear his wild spontaneous song before my window in his cage a blithe canary sits and swings and circles round on golden wings and startles all the vicinage when from his china tankard he takes a dainty drink to clear his throat for as sweet a note as ever yet was carolled by lark or bobolink sometimes he drops his pretty head and seems to be dispirited and then his little mistress says poor dicky misses his chickweed or else i've fed him musty seed as stale as last year's oranges but all the time i wonder if we half comprehend in sweet song words the thought of birds or why so oft their raptures in sudden silence end they do not pine for forest wilds within the blue canary isles as exiles from their native home for in a foreign domicile they first essayed their gamut trill beneath a cage's gilded dome but maybe some sad throbbing betimes their spirits stirs who love as we dear liberty that they admired and petted are only prisoners End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cuba by Hattie Howard. Read for LibriVox.org by Catherine Rivera. As one long struggling to be free, O suffering isle, we look to thee in sympathy and deep desire that thy fair borders yet shall hold a people happy, self controlled saved and exalted as by fire burning like thine own tropic heat thousands of lips afar repeat the story of thy wrongs and woes while argosies to thee shall bear of men and money everywhere strength to withstand thy stubborn foes hispaniola waves her plume defiant over many a tomb where sleep thy sons the true and brave but lo an army coming on the places fill of heroes gone for liberty their lives who gave the nations wait to hear thy shout of independence ringing out chief of the antilles what wilt thou buffets and jives from your fate old monarchy dilapidate 
or freedom's laurels for thy brow. In man's extremity it is that heaven's opportunities shine forth like jewels from the mine. Then Cuba, in thy hour of need, with vision clear the tokens read, and trust for aid that power divine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sangamon River by Hetty Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Sangamon River. O oh, sunny Sangamon, thy name to me, soft syllabled like some sweet melody, familiar is since adolescent years, as household phrases ringing in my ears. Its measured cadence sounding to and fro from the dim corridors of long ago. There was a time in happy days gone by, that rosy interval of youth, when I, the scholar ardent early learned to trace great tributaries to their starting place, and thine some prairie hollow obsolete, whose name how few remember or repeat. Like thee, meandering, yet wafted back, from distant hearth and lonely bivouac, from strange vicissitudes in other lands, from half-wrought labours and unfinished plans, I come, in thy cool depth my brow to lave, and rest a moment by thy silver wave. But ah, uh, what means thy muddy, muggy hue? I thought thee limpid as yon ether blue, I thought an angel's wing might dip below thy sparkling surface and be white as snow and of thy current i had dared to drink if not as one imbibing draughts of ink has some rough element of horrid clay that spoils the earth like lava beds they say come sliding down as avalanches do and thy fair bosom percolated through or some apothecary's compound vial polluted thee so many a murky mile why not proud state beneficence ensure selling thy soil or giving to the poor for sad it is that dust of illinois with coal and compost its conjoined alloy a more so washed from mississippi's mouth should build up acres for our neighbours south river i grieve but not for loss of dirt one stainless just because of what thou wert thus on thy banks i linger and reflect that surely as all waterways connect forever flowing onward to the sea shall the great billow thy redemption be and now dear sangamon farewell i wait on that elysian scene to meditate when separated from the dregs of earth life's dream shall sweeter be of better worth and like the ocean with its restless tide by its own action cleansed and purified End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Syringas by Hetty Howard. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Syringas. The smallest flower beside my path, in loveliness of bloom, some element of comfort hath to rid my heart of gloom. But these, of spotless purity, and fragrant as the rose as sad a sight recall to me as time shall ever disclose oh there are pictures on the brain sometimes by shadows made till dust is blent with dust again that never never fade and things supremely bright and fair as ever known in life suggest the darkness of despair and sanguinary strife i shut my eyes Tis all in vain, the battlefield appears, and one among the thousand slain in manhood's brilliant years, an elbow pillowing his head, and on the crimson sand syringa blooms, disdained and dead, within his rigid hand. Could she foresee who from the stem had plucked that little spray of flowers that he would cherish them unto his dying day? Give these to M. Tis almost night, and tell her that I love. Alas, the letter he would write was finished up above. And so, with each recurring spring on decoration day, when to our hero's grace we bring the blossom wealth of May, 
while martial strains are soft and low and music seems a prayer unto a hallowed spot i go and leave syringas there end of poem this recording is in the public domain stormbound by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by melanie t my careful plans all storm subdued in disappointing solitude the weary hours began and scarce i deemed when time had sped marked only by the passing tread of some pedestrian but with the morrow's tranquil dawn a fairy scene i looked upon that filled me with delight far reaching from my own abode the world in matchless splendour glowed arrayed in spotless white the surface of the hillside slope gleamed in my farthest vision's scope like opalescent stone rich jewels hung on every tree whose crystalline transparency golconda's gems outshone beyond the line where wayside posts stood up like fear-inspiring ghosts of awful form and mien a mansion tall my neighbour's pride a seeming castle fortified uprose in wondrous sheen the evergreens loomed up before my staunch and storm-defying door like snowy palaces that one dare only penetrate with reverence as at heaven's gate awed by its mysteries the apple tree's extended arms upheld a thousand varied charms the curious tracery of trellised grapevine seemed to me a rare network of filigree in silver drapery and i no longer fought it hard from favourite pursuits debarred nor gazed with rueful face for every object seemed to be invested with the witchery of magic art and grace and though a multitude of cares perplexing profitless affairs absorbed the hours it seems that on the golden steps of thought i mounted heavenward and wrought out many hopeful schemes thus every day though it may span the gulf wherein some cherished plan lies disarranged and crossed if ere it's closed we shall have trod the path that leads us nearer god cannot be counted lost end of poem this recording is in the public domain the master of the grange by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by melanie t the type of enterprise is he of sense and thrift and toil who reckons less on pedigree than rich productive soil and no blue bud if such there be his veins can ever spoil and yet on blood his heart is set he has his sacred cow some alderney or jersey pet the mistress of the mow his favourite pig is by brevet lord suffolk of the slough to points of stock he is alive as keenest cattle king a thoroughbred he deigns to drive but not a mongrel thing the very bees within his hive are crossed without a sting if apple boughs drop pumpkins and tomatoes grow on trees it is because his grafting hand has so diverted these that alien shoots with native stand like twin-born siamese no neater farm a nabob owns its care his chief employ to find fertility in bones and briars to destroy where once he lightly skipped the stones a whistling happy boy the ancient plough and awkward flail he banished long ago the zigzag fence with ponderous rail he dares to overthrow and wields with sinews strong and hale the latest style of hoe the household founded as it were upon the decalogue he classes with the minister the rural pedagogue and as a sort of angel cur regards his spotted dog 
His wife reviews the magazines, his children lead the school. He tries a thousand new machines and keeps his temper cool, but bristles at Kentucky jeans and her impressive mule. With science letting down the bars, enlightening ignorance, enigmas deeper than the stars he sells as by a glance, and raises cinnamon cigars from poor tobacco plants. By no decree of fashion dressed and busier than fate, the student farmer keeps abreast with mighty men of state, and treasures like his Sunday vest the motto, Educate. Beyond encircling hills of blue where I may never range, this monarch in his realm I view of title new and strange, and make profound obscience to the master of the grange. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Friend Indeed by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org By April 6090, California, United States of America A Friend Indeed If every friend who meditates in soft unspoken thought, with winning courtesy and tact, the doing of a kindly act, to cheer some lonely lot, were like the friend of whom I dream, then hardship but a myth would seem. If sympathy were always thus, oblivious of space, and like the tendrils of the vine, could just as lovingly incline to one in distant place, to draw the world together so might none the name of stranger know, if every throb responsive that my ardent spirit thrills, could, like the skylark's ecstasy, be vocal in sweet melody, beyond dividing hills in octaves of the atmosphere were music wafted to his ear. If every friendship were like one, so helpful and so true to other hearts as sad as mine twould bring the joy so near divine and hope revive anew so life's dull path would it illume and radiate beyond the tomb end of poem this recording is in the public domain the needed one by hattie howard read for leverox dot org by katherine rivera Twas not rare versatility, nor gift of poesy or art, nor piquant, sparkling jeu d'esprit, which at the call of fancy come, that touched the universal heart, and won the world's encomium. It was not beauty's potent charm, for admiration followed her, unmindful of the rounded arm, the fair complexion's brilliancy, if form and feature shapely were, or lacked the grace of symmetry so not by marked especial power she grew endeared to human thought but just because in trial's hour was loving service to be done or sympathy and counsel sought she made herself the needed one o oh, great the blessedness must be of heart and hand and brain alert in projects wise and manifold impending sorrow to avert that duller natures fail to see or stand aloof severe and cold and who shall doubt that this is why in womanhood's fluorescent prime she passed the portals of the sky as if a life thus truly given to purpose pure and act sublime were needed also up in heaven end of poem this recording is in the public domain thy will be done by hattie howard Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Thy will be done. Sometimes the silver cord of life is loosed at one brief stroke, as when the elements at strife, with nature's wild contentions rife, uproot the sturdy oak, or fell disease in patience born attenuates the frame, till the meek sufferer, wan and worn, of energy and beauty shorn death's sweet release would claim by instant touch or long decay is dissolution wrought when lost to earth the grave and gay the young and old who pass away abide in hallowed thought in dear regard together drawn affection's debt to pay fond greetings we exchange at dawn with one who ere the day be gone is bruised and lifeless clay 
o thou in manhood's morning time with health and hope elate for whom in youth's enchanting prime the bells of promise seem to chime we mourn thy early fate to us how sudden yet to thee perchance god kindly gave some warning ere the fatal key unlock the door of mystery that lies beyond the grave then let us hope that one who found such favor trust and love and cordial praise from all around for rare fidelity renowned found favor too above so all is well though swift or slow god's will be done and we draw near to him for close and low beneath his chastening hand the blow will fall less heavily end of poem this recording is in the public domain snowflakes by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by eva davis of specious weight like tissue freight the snowflakes are and sparkle pure as the rich perure a lovely queen were proud to wear as volatile as fine and rare as thistledown dispersed in air or bits of filmy lace like nature's tear-drops strewn around that beautify and warm the ground but melt upon my face a ton or more against my door they lie and look in form and tint like piles of lint when war's alarum roused the land wrought out by woman's loyal hand from linen rag and robe and band from garments cast aside in hospital on battlefield the shattered limb that bound and healed or staunched life's ebbing tide i see the gleam of lake and stream the silver glint and frost portrayed of the bright cascade they bear the moisture of marshes dank the dew of the lawn or river bank the river itself by sunlight drank all these in frigid air that strange alembic crystallize in odd fantastic shape and size like gems of dazzling glare oh of the snow such fancies grow till thought is lost in wandering and wondering if portions of their drapery the angel beings sad to see so much of earth's impurity have dropped from clear skies as snowflakes hiding stain and blot to make this world a fairer spot and more like paradise end of poem this recording is in the public domain Menadnock by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson one summer time with love imbued to climb the mount explore the wood or rove from pole to pole upon Menadnock's brow i stood a lone adventurous soul beyond the bay state borderline a sweeping vista grand and fine embraced the berkshire hills embosomed hamlets clumps of pine and country domiciles afar mount tom in verdant teak and holyoke twin companion peak appeared gigantic cones the burning sunlight scorched my cheek and seemed to melt the stones beneath the gnarled and twisted root i loosed a pebble with my foot that leaped the precipice and like an arrow seemed to shoot adown the deep abyss beside the base that solstice day a city chap who chanced to stray was shooting somewhat too who when the nugget sped that way his firelock quickly drew while right and left he sought the quail or the timid hare that crossed his trail rang out a wild ha ha that might have turned the visage pale of a red-skinned chippewa the game was his for it made him quail he flung his gun and fled the vale the mountain dwellers say as though pursued by a comet's tail and disappeared for a end of poem this recording is in the public domain never had a chance by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by melanie t fresh from piano school and books a happy girl with rosy looks young ploughman rude and wan despite her pretty pouting prejudice her deep distaste for rural bliss or countryfied delight 
romance through all her nature ran indeed to wed a husband man suffused her ardent maiden thought by lofty fancy dwelt upon a new queen anne a terraced lawn a city's corner lot her lily fingers that so well could paint a scene in aquarel or broider plush with leaves and vines no more of real labour knew than waxen petals of the dew on native eagle tines anon with laps of tender ways that emphasised the courting days the housewife in her apron blue as mistress of her new abode by frequent lacrimation showed her grief and blunders too the butter making bread and cheese the old folks difficult to please the harvest hands voracious bears the infantry a parent's pride by duos proudly classified so multiplied her cares the treadmill round of duties that makes any life inane and flat without diversion sandwiched in the drudgery the overplus of toil and trouble arduous were rugged discipline what time for books and music when the lambs were bleating in their pen the chickens peeping at the door the rodent gnawing at the churn the buckweak wafers crisped to burn the kettle boiling o'er to her so far between and few what resting spells the farmer knew what intervals for culture and when intellect assumed the race he peerless held the foremost place no nobler in the land by virtue of exalted rank the brilliant senator from adorned society's expanse while by his side with folded hands her beauty gone the woman stands who never had a chance end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sorrow and Joy by Hetty Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Toa In sad procession, borne away To sound of funeral knell, Affection's tribute thus we pay, And in earth's sheltering bosom lay The friend to whom but yesterday We gave the sad farewell but scarce the melancholy sound has died upon the ear before the mournful dirge is drowned by wading anthems glad rebound that stir the solemn air around with merry peals and clear within our home doth gladness tread so closely upon grief that in the tears of sorrow shed over our beloved lamented dead we see reflected joy instead that gives a blessed relief a father and a daughter gone beyond our fireside for one we loved and leaned upon the skilful archer death had drawn his bow and one in life's sweet dawn went out a happy bride we gave to heaven in manhood's prime him whose brave strength and worth life's rugged steeps had taught to climb and her for whom a tuneful rhyme the bells of promise sweetly chime we consecrate to earth thus each a mystic path untried has entered god is just we leave with him our friend who died with him we leave our fair young bride who shall no more with us abide and in his goodness trust oh life and death uncertainty bright hopes and anxious fears commingle so bewilderingly that perfect joy we may not see till all shall reunited be beyond this veil of tears end of poem this recording is in the public domain
watch hill by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by betty b watch hill fair summer home peninsula enriched by every breeze from fragrant islands wafted far across the sunny seas a profile rare a height of land outlined gainst heaven's blue with bolder touch than skilful hand of artist ever drew in mountain billows that parade the grandeur of the deep is his supremacy displayed whose hands the waters keep no sweep of waves in broad expanse with wild weird melody shall thus an unseen world enhance there shall be no more sea a wealth of joy perfected days where glorious sunset dies resplendent in declining rays surpass italia's skies proud caravanseries that compete in studied arts to please the multitude with restless feet from earth's antipodes a motley company astray the sojourner for health the grave serene the devotee of fashion and of wealth artistic cottages upreared in beauty strength and skill the happy healthful homes endeared to lovers of watch hill a golden crown adorns the spot for ever blessed be the hand beneficent that wrought a temple by the sea a star in some bright diadem in glory it shall be for truly i will honour them saith god who honour me when christians meet to praise and pray may feet that never trod the sanctuary learn the way unto the house of god glad paeans down the centuries with joy the world shall thrill the lord revered and honoured is the glory of watch hill end of poem this recording is in the public domain supplicating by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by michelle fry baton ridge louisiana one morn i looked across the way and saw you fling your window wide to welcome in the breath of may in breezes from the mountain side and greet the sunlight's earliest ray with happy look and satisfied the pansies on your window sill in terracotta flower pot like royal gold and purple frill upon the stony casement wrought adorned your tasteful domicile and claimed your time and care and thought in cherry trees the robins sang their sweetest carol to your ear and shouts of merry children rang out on the dewy atmosphere but to my heart there came a pang that my salute you did not hear i envied then the favoured breeze that dallied with your flowing hair begrudged the songsters in the trees and longed to be a flower at fair some favoured blossom like heart-ease within your miniature parterre o oh, heart that finds such ample room within thy confines broad and true for song and sunshine and perfume and all benign impulses go i pray thee dissipate my gloom and take in thy petitioner too end of poem this recording is in the public domain Honest John by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He was a man whose lot was cast, as some might think, in lines severe, in humble toil whose life was passed from week to week, from year to year. And yet, by wife and children blessed, he labored on with cheerful zest as one revered and set apart a quaint unusual name he bore that well became the frugal heart while plain habiliments he wore without a tremor or a chill at thought of some uncancelled bill a king might not disdain to wear the title so appropriate to one who never sought to share exalted station amongst the great nor cared if on the scroll of fame were never traced his worthy name as bound by honor's righteous law in strictest rectitude he wrought the man who calmly clearly saw his duty and who dallied not to garner life's necessities for those whose comfort heightened his 
the parent bird its brood protects as fledglings in their downy nest until a power their flight directs from trial trips to distant quest through trackless zones of ether blue for bird companions strange and new but ere his babes from prattlers grew upon his knee or by his side to womanhood and manhood true too soon we thought the father died how could we know when death was nigh those little wings were taught to fly another name his boyhood knew so seldom heard that lapse of years had made it seem a thing untrue unmusical to friendly ears and thus his appellation odd his passport was where'er he trod so long on every lip and tongue as if by universal whim to him had his cognomen clung and like a garment fitted him that angels even must have heard of one like them in love preferred and when he came to heaven's door to peter's self or acolyte the holy warder looking o'er tis honest john he said aright and his pilgrim spirit passed within because his walk with god had been end of poem this recording is in the public domain bushnell park by hetty howard read for LibriVox.org by eva davis sweet resting place that long hath been a boon elysian mid the din of city life mid city smoke where weary ones who toil and spin have turned aside as to an inn whose swinging sign a welcome spoke where misanthropes find medicine and peals of laughter that began with ancient resurrected joke or ready wit of harlequin where children free from discipline take on diversion's easy yoke fair oasis to view aright its charming paths its sloping height its beautiful and broad expanse must one approach in witching night when like abodes of airy sprite revealed unto the wondering glance or flooded with electric light than luna's beams more dazzling bright illumined nooks the scene enhance while zephyrs mischievous unite the timid stroller to affright by swaying boughs and shadow dance the capital that crowns the hill where boreas sweeps with icy chill a masterpiece of studied art conceived by genius versatile and fashioned with unerring skill o'erlooks the busy crowded mart and like a kingly domicile its burnished dome and sculpture thrill with admiration every heart and strangers pause beyond the rill to view its grandeur lingering still and with reluctant steps depart o bushnell park memorial soil that marks success though near to foil of one who with prophetic ken with honest zeal and ceaseless toil opposed the vandal wish to spoil this lovely bit of vale and glen who mid discussion and turmoil of adverse minds did not recoil from vigorous stroke of tongue and pen and then till passion ceased to boil untroubled waters poured out oil and to his plans won other men so when fatigued and overwrought in summer time when skies are hot we seek its verdant velvet sward oh may we hold in reverent thought the debt we owe forgetting not the spirit passed to its reward of one whose giant soul was fraught with true benignity who sought to touch humanity's quick cord with fire from heaven's altar brought that love and zeal and being caught as inspiration from the lord End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At General Grant's Tomb by Hattie Howard. Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. Afar my loyal spirit stirred at mention of his name. Afar in ringing notes I heard the clarion voice of fame so to his tomb hope long deferred with reverent step i came the pilgrim muse revivified and half forgotten day a slow procession tearful eyed in funeral array and from mac gregor's lonely side a hero borne away here sleeps he now where long ago hath nature raised his mound a mighty channel far below divided hills around where countless thousands come and go as to a shrine renowned 
With awe do strangers' eyes discern a casket mid the green, luxuriance of a flower and fern, airy and cool and clean, unchanged from spring to spring's return, this charnel chamber scene. His country's will, his care and thought, beloved in peace was he. Magnanimous in war shall not the nation grateful be, and render at his burial spot a testimonial free. O oh, let us, ere the days come on, when energy is spent, to him the silent soldier gone, statesman and president, on Riverside's majestic lawn, uprear a monument. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Be Courteous by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090 California, United States of America Be Courteous Ah, yes, why not? Is one more adventitious born than others? Sheikles richer, honors fuller, and all that? That he can pass his fellows by with lofty scorn? Nor even show the slight regard, the lifting of the hat? Why prate of social status? class or rank when earth is common tenting ground the heritage of all mankind except in purity is there no royal birth no true nobility but nobleness of heart and mind life is so short one journey long a pilgrimage that we cannot retrace nor ever pass this way again then why not turn for some poor soul a brighter page and line the way with courtesies unto our fellow men to give a graceful word or smile or lend a hand to one downcast and trembling on the borders of despair may help him to look up and better understand why god has made the sky so bright and put the rainbow there be courteous is nothing helpful half so cheap as kind urbanity that doth so much of gladness bring more precious too than all the treasures of the deep making the winter of discomfort seem like joyous spring be courteous and gentle be serene and good those grand ennobling and enduring virtues all may claim of each may it be said of the great multitude oh that my life were more like such in one of blessed fame is it that overcrowding care anxiety vortex of pleasure the incessant round of toil and strife beget indifference repressing love and sympathy till we forget the beautiful amenities of life then cometh the sad day when it with poignant sting lost opportunities shall speak to us reproachfully and ours shall be the disapproval of the king discourteous to these my creatures you have wounded me end of poem this recording is in the public domain a new suit by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by betty b a new suit the artist and the loom unseen in textures soft as crepe de chine spring weaves her royal robe of green with grasses fringed and daisies dotted with furzy tufts like mosses fine and showy clumps of eglantine with dainty shrub and creeping vine upon the verdant fabric knotted o oh, winter takes our love away for ashen hues of sober gray so when the blooming blushing may comes out in bodice cap and kirtle with arbutus her corsage laced and roses clinging to her waist we crown her charming queen of taste her chaplet wreath of modest myrtle for eighteen centuries and more her fairy hands of mottled ore the same habiliments she wore at her primeval coronation and still the pattern exquisite for every age a perfect fit in every land the favorite elicits world-wide admiration gay butterflies of fashion you who wear a suit a year or two then agitate for something new look at regina the patrician her cleverness is more than gold who so transforms from fabrics old the things a marvel to behold and glories in the exhibition why worry for an overdress the acme of luxuriousness beyond all envy to possess renewed as oft as lambkin fleeces why flutter round in pretty piquet to follow style's capricious freak to match pongee 
or moray antique and break your peace in hopeless pieces o mantua maker costumer and fair robed wearer study her and imitate the conjurer so prettily economizing without demure regret or pout who always puts the bright side out and never frets at all about the world's penchant for criticizing end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Little Clock by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Little Clock, kind friend, you do not know how much I prize thee, timely treasure, so dainty, diligent, and such a constant source of pleasure. The man of brains who could invent so true a chronometer has set a charming precedent and made a good repeater. It speaks with clear, commanding clicks suggestive of the donor and tends to business never sick a bit more than the owner it goes when i do when i stop as by the dial showing it never lets a second drop but simply keeps on going it tells me when i am to eat which isn't necessary when food with me is obsolete i'll be a reliquary it tells me early when to rise and bother with dejeuner to sally forth and exercise and fill up my porte monnaie i hear it talking in the night as if it were in clover you've never lost your appetite you've never been run over it makes me wish that i might live more faithful unto duty and unto others something give like this bijou of beauty it holds its hands before its face so very modest is it so like the people in the place where i delight to visit sometimes i wonder if it cries the course i am pursuing because it has so many eyes and must know what i'm doing sometimes i fear it makes me cry no matter and no pity afraid at last i'll have to die in some far foreign city it travels with me everywhere and chirrups like a cricket as if it said with anxious air don't lose your tick tick ticket companion of my loneliness along my journey westward it never leaves me comfortless but has the last and best word i would not spoil its lovely face and so i go behind it and hold it like a china vase so careful when i wind it a clock is always excellent that has its label on and proves a fine advertisement for waterbury con those yankees ah they never shun a chance to make a dime and counterfeit the very sun in keeping standard time ah well the little clock has proved the best of all bonanzas and thus my happy heart is moved to these effusive stanzas end of poem this recording is in the public domain on bancroft height by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by melanie t on bancroft height aurora's face shines brighter than a star as stepping forth in dewy grace the gates of day unbar and lo the firmament the hills and the vales that intervene creation's self with gladness thrills to greet the matin queen on bancroft height the atmosphere is but an endless waft of life's elixir pure and clear as mortal ever quaffed and such the sweet salubrity of air and altitude is banished many a malady and suffering subdued on bancroft height the sunset glow when day departing dies outrivals all that tourist knows of famed italian skies and happy dwellers round about who view the scene aright in admiration grow devout and lord the lord of light round bancroft height rich memories commingle earth's affairs among the world's celebrities of him whose name it bears the scholar wise compatriot who left to later men the grand achievements unforgot of that historic pen fair bancroft height revisited when all the land is white a halo crowns its noble head impelling fresh delight 
the daring wish in winter time the blizzard to defy those shining slippery slopes to climb up nearer to the sky though borealis abrade the cheek with bufferings of snow he gives a vigour that the weak and languid never know when with rejuvenescent thrill like children everywhere bestirs the rhapsody the will to make a snowman there on bancroft height and bancroft tower such vistas charm the eye to where life's consummate glorious hour but to behold and die yet in the sparkle and the glow is earth so very fair the spirit lingers loath to go and dreams of heaven up there end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Reformer by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T When I was young, my heart elate With ardent notions warm I thirst to inaugurate A spirit of reform The universe was all awry Philosophy despite A mundane thing's disjointed eye Was bound to set aright my mind conceived a million plans for hope was brave and strong but dared not with unaided hands combat a giant wrong so with caress i sought to coax those who had humoured me in infancy the dear old folks and gain their sympathy by quarrelling with extant laws they would have deemed a shame who clung to error just because their fathers did the same i sought in pleasure's gilded halls where grace and beauty stirred at revelries in purchase calls to make my projects heard then turned to stately palaces of luxury and ease where wealth's absorbing object was the master's whim to please and spoke of evils unredressed of danger yet to be they only answered like the rest but what is that to me and even pious devotees whom sacred walls immure condemned me as by feeble praise what more could i endure down by the stream so pure and clear that sunbeams pause to drink in loneliness and grief sincere i pressed its grassy brink thick darkness seemed to veil the day beyond a realm of tears utopia's land of promise lay and not till later years i learned this lesson that to win results from labour sure reformers always must begin among the lowly poor for those whose lot privation is and whose delights if you whose aggregate of miseries is want of something new the measures of whose happiness is but an empty cup for every novelty will press alert to fill it up end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of poems by hattie howard